Well, I am super excited today. I bought the property two months ago. Before I ever bought it, I found one of the corner property markers. And I was pretty excited with that. But I actually didn't find a second out of four corner markers until last weekend. And it frustrated me, like when we did the hammock video, how I couldn't ever seem to find the one over in the Russian olive area. It seemed odd. And also one right here, which would be the northwest corner. If the marker's there, it should be super easy to find, but I've never been able to find it. So, did a lot of research how to convert what a surveyor says on a map from 1978 to what like Google Maps might tell us where that same location is and I have to admit it was actually kind of difficult for whatever reason I couldn't figure it out but this morning during a rainstorm I sat in the tent did a little bit of research and I believe I figured it out let's see Now to make it find, uh, make it easier to find in the future, like super fast preference, because it's just hidden in that bush. Just tie some high visibility line on it. Kind of leaping around the bush like Christmas lights, just to really be able to see it super fast. Awesome. All right. Now, what we're gonna ask Google Maps to do in a super remote area, which Google Maps isn't the greatest as it is for directions, hence why it was sending me over there, but the actual marker was like right here. What I'm gonna ask it to do is to send us where I put a marker on the map, right in the trees, to do essentially the exact same thing and finally get our corner market there, our corner marker there. Alright, for those that have viewed previous videos, you might recognize this area as the Russian Olive Tree Grove. And the hammock area 
and the home to many, many deer from what I can see. I was actually trying to sneak up real stealthily just in case I could come across a deer. Hammock looks great from where we left it last time, last weekend. Perfect. And it looks like the deer are bedded down right here with it. Nice. All right. You might recall the day we set the hammock, I thought that that straight, super straight stick sticking up there might have been a surveyor marker. Alas, it was not. So I searched all along these fence posts, eight to 10 feet in, all through the, the high grass and didn't see a thing. So it is in this general area. So this is where we're going to pull up the GPS and find it. All right, so I've got good news and bad news. So my property is not where I was looking, about 20 feet over there to the fence line. I thought it was this area. It is not. It's actually just a step or two over here and hidden in this little thicket. That stake there is not from the survey surveyor, that's what I just put down. And now I'm gonna put the pink line up for high visibility. All right, now that I got it marked and I got some pink high visibility line out, I'll be able to find that really easy in the future. So that's good. Now what I've got to figure out real quickly is the hammock I set up on my property. Or did I accidentally set it up on the next door neighbors? I'm gonna check that out real fast. All right, so from what I can see, now that I've figured out exactly where that property line is, I'm like right on the property line where the hammock is. In fact, I think that tree might be the marker going directly east. Anywhere within, like right here, right in this little goalie that I'm actually right on top of. A little dry ditch. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead. I mean, it's not like I'm putting up a fence or something permanent. This is easily movable in 30 seconds or less. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave the hammock up for right now. My southern neighbor is actually a property investment company. It's not an actual person that, you know, that owns the land. It's a company. And it's actually for sale right now, although weirdly enough, they're not advertising it. But uh, anyway, if it were actually like somebody lived here, bought it, whatever, and I met them, I would bring them over here and ask them, hey, what are your thoughts about the hammock? This is like right on the property lines and until either one of us have an up-to-date survey done are you all right with me leaving it here kind of thing because it's not hurting anything and it's not permanent so I'm gonna leave it back to camp so when this one came available the first time I saw it I knew the area made an offer Already sold. What the? Well, glad I didn't drive out. <laughs> and about six months later, it came on the market again. Of course, more expensive this time, because ultimately what happened was a land investment company saw it, snatched it up. It, they put it up on the market six months later. This time I went ahead and drove out. And 
before I even stepped foot on it, I literally drove right up to it, stepped out, made an offer. Right there. I <laughs> made arrangements for earnest money agreement, all that. And then I checked out the property. And I fell in love with it. Oh my, it was just... I can't even say fully to express how awesome it was. I just felt, this is it. That first day I found the, what is the Northeast property marker. And I was thinking, oh, Golden, this got surveyed 45 years ago. And here's a marker right here. These markers are gonna be really easy to find. <laughs> no. Uh, it took me about six more weeks to actually stumble upon the second marker, which happened to be the southeast marker. I knew the general area of where it was, but I couldn't find it. And literally last weekend, I just happened to be out there walking, figured, well, I'm in the area, I'm going to check it again, and it was right there. Wow, fantastic, I've got two out of the four corner markers now, sweet! So. Last weekend I went and looked again for the northwest and the southwest corner markers, couldn't find them. Part of that experience was on the hammock video. So if you're like me and you found that perfect piece of land, but you really want to be able to figure out, okay, where exactly are my markers? So you, maybe you can start to do things. Maybe you want to put up a fence or whatever it may be. You have to know where your boundaries are. And ultimately, I went back to the 1978 survey map, and their numbers are weird. They're not like GPS numbers. It was, I thought they were, but they were longitude, latitude, and I figured I'd be able to interpret ultimately where exactly those are. And for whatever reason, I couldn't did a lot of research on it too so ultimately what I ended up finding out was when you pull up a county parcel map now keep in mind every county has these different and I've seen so many different types it's very odd some of them are super basic and really don't provide any information whatsoever and some of them are so advanced that man anything you ever wanted to know is right there <clears throat> anyway in my particular county, it's mid-road, mid-range. And what I ended up finding out is the whole time I'd been doing all this research, if I had just looked at the very lower left-hand side of the screen, every time I moved my mouse, it was giving me GPS coordinates. I had no idea. I literally, I must have looked at that site over a hundred times. Aerial mapping the property, everything. Anyway. <laughs> Once I figured that out, I put it into Google Maps because I was able to figure out where the corner markers are, what the GPS coordinates were. Put it into Google Maps. It didn't work. And I thought, oh man, here I am again. I wasted my time again. But I ended up figuring out, literally I stumbled across it by looking at some pins that I had already put on my personal map and I realized they were reversed. So, for whatever reason, so what shows on the government's county parcel map and actually Google, for whatever reason, the numbers are reversed. So, I'm gonna show you a county parcel map, how to get the coordinates, and then how to put them into Google Maps. So. I'll try to zoom in as close as I can, hold the camera, do it one-handed. In fact, I might be able to, with my tripod, no, it's too tight in here. Anyway, I'll show you how I did it. So ultimately what you're gonna do is take these coordinates that are showing in the very lower left hand of the screen, and you're gonna input those on Google Maps. Now, if you had an actual GPS device that understood that language, then it probably would already put it in for you, like a Garmin or something. I don't know. I have a Garmin, but not 
of that technology. So what I do have access to, and pretty much everybody does, is Google Maps. So if you look here at that number, it starts with a negative and then a positive and it shows degrees. You actually on Google Maps have to type that just the opposite way. It's kind of strange. I figured that out by stumbling across it. So you're actually going to put in something like, hopefully you can see what I'm typing. Bear with me. I'm holding the camera by hand, so. Okay, so you're going to input that number and you're going to put a comma. And then in this case, it's a negative number. You'll put the comma and then a space and then negative and that number. Which, gosh, it's really hard holding this by hand. It's end typing. <laughs> All right, 110.067. Seven, three, two, one. Enter. And it will zoom in. Oh, tell me that didn't just happen. Apparently, it wants to keep this thing here. It will zoom into this particular area, which just happens to be right where we were at. on the county GIS map, but now we've got it on Google Maps and we can make all different coordinate points and be able to get directions exactly to that exact spot, which is what I did today. So that's what I did today, is I put in the coordinates from that I knew from the GIS County parcel viewer map, put them into actual Google Maps, and then I was able to go directly to that exact pinpoint spot and drive a stake. So the original property markers weren't there from 1978. Who knows what happened in the last 45 years, but they're there now. And I probably would never hire a surveyor until I know I'm ready to put up any type of fencing or anything like that otherwise it's kind of irrelevant to me just as long as I know hey I'm within my bounds within a realistic perspective as an example when I thought oh whoa a hammock might be on someone else's land that concerned me and I wanted to at least check to be sure and even still, I'm not 100% sure the hammock is on my land. My thoughts for keeping it there are, it's not a permanent structure. Literally, I can take it down in 30 seconds. Didn't cause any damage to anything. And it's right on the line. So I'm sure I'll move it to a different spot. But today, there was no rush to move it. So anyway, that's how I found my property markers. I hope that's helpful to, to folks as maybe they're in the same situation as, as I am or might eventually be. And feel free to comment below. Let me know your thoughts.